Good evening, world. Welcome to Stranger Species. Mike Davis, Ethne Davis, coming to you from our beautiful studio, a.k.a. Uh, extra really, really small bedroom upstairs. <laughs> upstairs, yeah. How, what episode is this? I don't even know anymore. I think... 13, 14. No, I think 12. Oh, 12, okay. Sometimes... I write the title down on the top of my script, but apparently today I did not, because I don't know what number it is. Okay, well, that's okay. I think it's 12. We can find out. Yeah, it's somewhere in there. How are you doing tonight? Really, really sun-drenched tired. It was hot today. Today was like our last day of real summer, maybe. Well, tomorrow is supposed to be really nice here. Is it? But in... Like where we were today, um, yeah, it gets about five degrees colder, and then in the next ten day forecast, there's nothing anywhere near like today. So we so it was almost a hundred degrees today. Um, well, like ninety up in up Idaho. there. Mm-hmm. My truck said it was ninety nine as I was driving home from work. Oh, okay. But it's always a little high. Well, and also it, you were in Spokane when you left right. work, so. Um, I think Wednesday, so two days from now, it's supposed to be like 75 and rainy. Yeah. Drastic difference. Yeah. I don't know what any of this is in Celsius. I'm I know. Sorry. That's okay. But our kids are, um, like, even though they're very sun kissed, they even got a lot of sun today. Like it was a, like just a exhausting day. So it was Hot. a wonderful day. Yeah. It was Zero fun. complaints. We went and got to go outside and. And play out in the sun and after work and stuff. And yeah, it was, it awesome. was good. All day, basically, actually, yeah. for me. Yeah, for you all day. <laughs> I had to go to work. I had to have all four kids. That, that's... Plus more. <laughs> trade-off, yeah. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> is... They're both okay. Yeah, they're, they're both, both good. good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was good. It was fun. It was nice to get out and kind of put a uh, kind of a bookend on summer. Yeah. Mentally, just be like, okay, we have more great, more good days. Wonderful, but not expecting to have any. Right. Quite kids go back to school next warm. week for us, and so it's just kind of yeah. For those of you that are been in school for almost a month, I'm sorry, but again, you get out earlier. So I, I, I mean, you win some and you lose some. And I, where we live in the Pacific Northwest, really, the time frame that we do it at is honestly perfect. Sure, like if we were to get out in, you know. May, it would just be ridiculous because it, it's not warm rainy. enough. Yeah, it's just yeah. not warm enough to do all the things. So when we're out, you know, in June, it's gorgeous at that point and we just go hard. It's like the seasons know, like, oh, September 1st, kind of Labor Day weekend and we're ready to chill out. So I think it works we're ready good. to chill. Yeah, I'm very ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my School kids are dreams. not ready to be done fishing. I mean, my our little six year old, he has grown very akin to fishing in the last week basically yeah yeah it he can't stop our 11 year old did he catch a big fish this morning yeah yeah you sent me that picture picture and i was like holy cow he even knows the name of it like frank no 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 like the kind of fish he got it was he doesn't know the actual fish's name like he didn't introduce himself michael sorry really so anyway he caught a big fish actually that was last night that last last evening but then this morning or sometime today they this morning they fished for hours um they got a little baby bass and he was really cute like they would he was cute okay like i don't really call fish cute but i mean this fish was cute it's a cute little baby bass huh yeah it was really cute the fish yesterday was really cool but i didn't see it in person i only saw the pictures because they released them too soon and i always get very sad when they release them before i get to actually see them but it's nice they release them since but we're not going to eat them. I actually love, love that they are loving fishing because they're not around. <laughs> basically, yes, it's wonderful. They have, to be quiet. they have to be quiet and it's kind of calm. But our my little nephew today they they have four boys. We have three. They have four, and I can't even imagine what their house looks like because their oldest one is nine. So um, they were doing something in the Ozarks. I don't know. They live in Illinois. They li- I, forgive me, but I know it sounds like it's very far away and majestic. But um, wherever they were, my little nephew got a hook in his 
earlobe, you guys. So then I told my kids right away, I went down there to the dock and I was like, you guys, you have to be so careful where your hook is at. And, you know, I, I couldn't show them the pictures because we don't have enough reception where we were, but saw the pictures after and goodness gracious. I mean, it was right through there. I haven't seen the pictures. Oh, Check them out. Yeah. Anyway, so totally side note. Sorry, guys. We're going on a tangent here. but That's all right. Tangents um, are fun. I mean, they are. <laughs> but anyway, the fishing is amazing. It's built-in babysitter. It's the best ever. Well, good. Yeah. Well, let's get it moving then. All right. On to today's. So uh, one quick little thing that I want to announce, actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, and maybe this is an announcement for you too. So official. I know. Um, we're going to start doing some YouTube shorts. So I started a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not super familiar with how YouTube channels work. So I believe it is Strangest Species Podcast is what the YouTube channel is called. But... So I come across ideas fairly frequently for the show where I'm like, oh, that is amazing. But then once you start hashing it out, you're like, oh, no, that's about uh, a minute's worth of content. Like I can't do a full hour or 45 minutes, you know, story. But they're really cool, just little tidbits here or there. So I think what I might do is start filming us randomly when you're least expecting it. And I'll drop some crazy factoid on you. How are you going to film when I'm not expecting it? Like, is that possible that you can be recording me and I don't oh, you'll know? You'll know it? I'm doing it. It'll just be like, hey, you're washing the dishes, and I'll pop in and be like, hey. But the problem is, I won't look good. You always look good. Oh, <laughs> you think I always look good. But for me and my own judgments of looking good and you popping up this video, I don't know if I love that. So, There's a lot of things I do I don't know if you love. Well, We'll see how this works, people. Anyways, that's something that might be coming down the line here soon. YouTube shorts. It's like Disney shorts. shorts. Yeah. Only much shorter. Right. I do love Disney shorts, though. Yeah, they're fun. So today, for our our conversation, I want you to put on your mom hat. It's basically always on, but okay. I want you to look at this story through the lens of a mother with small children. I can do that. Good. So today we're going to talk about Alcatraz. Oh, cool. What do you know about Alcatraz? It's a prison in the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know like how far out. I know the movie The Rock was filmed there. Its nickname is The Rock. I knew that it. It used to do tours. Maybe it still does tours. I assume they still do. I don't know. Uh, never done a tour, but uh, that's about my extent. <laughs> that's perfect. That's a yeah. great background on The Rock. Um, not the actor The Rock, but the famous prison The Rock. So yeah, Alcatraz, super famous prison. Probably, I would argue, the most famous prison in the world because it gets so much notoriety from Hollywood. There's been so many movies about it. Have there really been so many? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. So many. Oh. I have no idea how many. Oh, okay. But I feel like a lot. Um, It opened in 1934 and was open until 1963. Uh, and it housed back back then many, many infamous criminals such as Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. Not the rapper Machine Gun Kelly, but the actual gangster Machine Gun Kelly. Um... And like I said, it's it's been lots and lots of or only in lots 30, of movies. Only thirty years though. Mm-hmm. Why did it not? It just logistically didn't. Logistically, work very good? it was really hard to do. So originally, I believe it was a, a naval fortress. Oh. So it is in the middle of the San Francisco Bay. It is extremely isolated. Um, the temperatures of the water are very cold. Has really really nasty currents. Um, and so they decided to turn this old fortress into a prison but it was a naturally formed island like the island was out there okay yep the rock is the actual rock that it is sitting on yes is naturally occurring and the navy used it i think it was the navy okay i didn't really go into a lot of that's okay i was just history on it because it's not important to our conversation today um but it did house 
it didn't necessarily always house the worst of the worst criminals. I think oftentimes it gets that reputation. What it did house were um, people who like to try to escape from prison. Mm, Sean Connery. Like Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. Well, he did escape from he prison. He did, I know. In the movie The Rock. Yeah. So people who weren't as good as him. <laughs> and it also did house some bad guys. I mean, people who maybe weren't the worst criminals that got them into jail. But then once they were in jail, they were violent or difficult. Mm. Um and Do so, we know if anyone ever escaped? That's a great question. Oh, okay. So 36 people tried. Okay. That's a lot of people. Island. Yeah. Yeah. 23 were captured. Okay. Six were shot to death. Ooh, okay. Two drowned. Okay. If you do all that math, that leaves five unaccounted for. So to this day, five people attempted to escape from Alcatraz. And they don't know. And they were never found. Mm. Now, the FBI and everybody assumes they drown, but I mean, they got eaten by sharks. Or got eaten by sharks. Or Are there even they, sharks out there? You always hear about them being eaten by sharks. I don't really know if there's any sharks in the San Francisco Bay I Area. Don't, yeah. Um, I'm not saying there aren't. I really just don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's sharks sharks everywhere, but like, are they known to have a lot of sharks in that area? That's what I, yeah. or my question was. I mean, there could be the haphazard shark anywhere, really. I mean, in the, in the movies that I've seen with The Rock. There's sharks. Really out with Alcatraz. Um, yeah, they always talk about sharks. Okay. But I don't know if that's really. Like a Hollywood it's, thing yeah. or like a real thing. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. But, so there are five who maybe got off, maybe got out. So curious. Yeah, you don't know. Okay. So it was a, uh, you know, very, very, I don't know the right word, popular, notorious, famous, infamous prison for 30 years. So my question for you is how would you feel about raising your family there? Uh, I would hate it. Why would you hate it? Well, I'm kind of like a forest person. So first of all, it's kind of like it's going to be a rock. Like the inmates don't bother you. The lack of. Oh, like if I lived there while it was an active prison. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oof. That would terrify me too, but it's more so like it would be cold and like, I don't know, just like that wet to the bone kind of feeling. I mean, maybe in the summertime it would be fine, but generally the inmates right by, I mean, that would be terrible. That would be terrible. Yep. Okay. Well, I won't, I won't leave this out there then, <laughs> Yeah, I please, guess. please don't. <laughs> Oh, man. This is all just a setup to see if you wanted to move to Alcatraz because they're setting up some luxury condos there. Um, count me out. You okay. can you can go, but I'm just kidding. That is not what this is about. I'll stay right where I am. <laughs> so the prison guards who worked at the prison also lived on the island. Because it was like logistically too hard mm-hmm. to get them back and forth and stuff. That's one of the reasons. Yeah. So because they lived there at any given time, there were about 60 or 70 families that lived on Alcatraz. I feel like, did they have normal houses? No. Ugh. So they lived in one apartment complex. Wait. Building 64. All these families lived in like different apartment, com- like an apartment complex? Mm-hmm. Huh. I hope they got paid a lot of money to be out there. Because... <laughs> well, we're going to talk a little bit about why they were there um, and what it was like for them. And, and most of them chose to be there. They wanted to be there. It was actually... Um, like a sought after. Yes. A very sought after spot to get. Maybe back then. Back then. Yeah. Maybe back then. So I the can't original imagine now. Rationale was the warden wanted all of his guards available all the time. Because they were housing so many inmates. Tough inmates. Inmates who wanted to get out and had tried to get out. Um, yeah, he wanted them to be able to call him back up pretty much whenever he needed to. And it just logistically made sense. Didn't work to have to boat them in and stuff. So only about a third or two thirds of the island actually was the prison. Okay. And then there was another third that was little community. Hmm. 
Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I guess our kids would have friends to play with. Lots of friends. Yeah. So actually there were nine children born on Alcatraz. Oh, that's terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Is there also a little hospital there that I don't know about? I think the only hospital legitimately was the prison hospital. Right. Like there would be like a prison doctor. That's probably the one that delivered your babies. Probably. Um, Yeah. Definitely count me out. Yeah. I've never, uh, so I had the opportunity. Not that I didn't have the opportunity. I had an acquaintance who practiced medicine in a prison. Medicine or dentistry? He practiced dentistry, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just didn't know who you were referring to. Yeah, yeah. To. So we never saw that life, but we very much could have. Yeah. The door was open to practice in a prison, and I thought that would be terrible. But it is, uh, yeah, I guess someone's got to do it, right? Even on Alcatraz. Right, yeah, even on Alcatraz. So there were, like I said, 60, 70 um, families that lived there in this one, mostly in this one apartment complex. Um, they also had a small little grocery store. And when I say grocery store, I really mean it was like milk and bread and eggs. I mean, like super, super um, bare bones. But they'd have some things there. They had a post office. They had an officer's club with accompanying bowling alley Hmm. and a large play area for the kids. Hmm. It's a weird place to grow up. So in the movie, The Rock with Nicolas Cage and Sean uh, Sean Connery, they never showed any of that stuff. No, they sure didn't. So is it still still there? I don't know. Like... When you go on tours, do you yeah, see did, all that? Yeah, or did they tear it down? Or I, don't know. I just think, um, okay, so there was like a little convenience store, but like I think of the logistics of everyday life. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously your kids aren't playing soccer or doing any of these things, but this time frame in life, like the 1935 to 65, let's say, just around it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to picture what the world would be like. What a, what a traditional, if you were on the mainland, like, you know, lifestyle would be like versus you, you know, your life on Alcatraz. Um, I mean, what would these kids be missing out on? Or I guess the, the parents, you know, like what's date night? <laughs> it doesn't really look like anything. Right. I mean, it's bowling. Like, I mean, okay. You can, you have, was so. it a traditional full length bowling? Like, Alley? I don't think it's like your Canadian. No, 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 no. But the actual length, like five pin or whatever you play. No, sure. What but do you guys play. Yeah, there's five pins. Five pin. Okay. Yeah. Um. I mean, it just seems extremely. We uh, were in San Diego earlier this year, and we played some really weird bowling. That was awesome. It was fun. That was really awesome. <laughs> but it was unique. It was very short. Yeah, super short, kind of mini. But still, Small little balls. yeah, but was it still 10 pins? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was, yeah, it was fun. It was really cute. It was. So anyway, I don't know what life would be like for date night, but general life. Um, so they did have, so the moms themselves would teach um, school up to kindergarten, which up is, I guess, to, just kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, that's really not much. And okay. the kids would be boated in every day into San Francisco. Oh, to they to would. Yeah. Well, and then like groceries and stuff. So the families essentially had a green light to come and go as they wanted. Oh, okay. Um, ferries came every, it was like being in Seattle and having to go over like Bainbridge. Or, yeah, yeah. I guess that wouldn't be so weird. Just, I, you would think that more traffic out there would increase the chances for escape or like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If these prisoners are aware of yeah. all of this going on. So I would have thought. So the kids and the well, anybody who lived on the island had special dog tags they had to wear. That essentially, when they would get on or off the ferry, they would show, like, I'm supposed to be here. Or I'm not supposed to be here. Um, And the ferries ran very regularly. Um, There was one funny story I read about one of the officer's daughter went into town to go on a date. And she actually missed the last ferry. Oh, no. And so she called her dad. Oh, no. Like, bawling. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm stuck in San Francisco. This is like in the sixties or whatever, you know? And so he called the ferry operator and said, no, you're going to turn around and you're going to go get her. 
And so it was like the one time they made an exception to the rule. And I'm wow. sure it was very embarrassing for her and quite the story. Yeah, for sure. But so you would have a very. Do you have any idea regimented. how long, not that this matters, but how long that ferry ride is? I don't. Okay. Because I'm picturing like maybe half hour. That'd be my guess. Do you think like longer that. than no, that? No. I mean, that'd be my, my guess. It just seems so inconvenient, you yeah. know? Yeah. So you would probably hang out at your house as much as possible. And kind of plan when you need to go into town. and I mean, yeah, unless you want to break. Like, you know that island fever kind of where you feel trapped? Because like, you live on a prison island? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, any island. I think even I've, you know, I've kind of heard of that with people who even live on Hawaii. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of get that feeling. And this is tiny compared to even, you know, like right. Oahu or whatever. But I'm just thinking... I would feel like maybe I'd want to escape on the ferry a lot. I don't know. I just don't think I would like it. Yeah. You probably... I mean, does grass grow on the rock? No, I think it's pretty rocky. <laughs> I think there's a lot of concrete and rock. <laughs> Hence the reason that yeah. it's called the rock. Yeah, yeah that'd be rough. A lot of the kids talked about they would do like a lot of bike riding and stuff because it's... Like oh. Their play area was like a giant cement pad. Yeah, basically. That makes sense. I wonder if you could a lot of circumscribe the island like on a bike. No, no. But we will talk. We'll get into some of their antics. What the kids did for entertainment. It's I mean, pretty fun. Yeah, as long as they don't get in the water, you know. That's right. You got much of the sharks, or cold water or waves. Or, and, yeah, I guess that too. Yeah, smashed into rocks, kind but of thing. Kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, the job was very good, especially okay. this is in the mid '30s when it opened. Mm. This is you know during in, World War II. No, it would have gone World War II, in between the wars, but during the Depression. Right. During the Depression and then in World War II. In World War II, yeah, exactly. So. Um, so it was a good job. It was a dependable job. And the housing was crazy cheap. So even back then, San Francisco was extremely expensive. And so the families who got to live on the island felt very, very grateful. Um, rent was $18 a month, which is equivalent today to about $250 a month. Wow. Literally... It's like Monopoly. I swear one of the rents on one of the Monopolies is $18 a month. Is it Alcatraz? <laughs> no, I don't think Alcatraz is one of the no. properties. I don't like Monopoly, so. No, I'm, I'm certain. I, I'm just kidding. I know it's not. I know. But anyway, I'm pretty sure $18 comes up. And I I remember thinking, like, this is the cheapest rent ever. You know what else is cool about their rent? Their laundry was all done by inmates. So you didn't have to do your own laundry even. I mean, is that cool? I don't so know if I cool. want other people like washing my underwear. What if they're famous gangsters? <laughs> I don't care. No, you don't care? No, okay. I just want to wash my own laundry. Fine. Well, maybe you could. No, like, you did they could. wash it by hand? I don't know. <laughs> that's awesome. They have lots of time to do stuff. I mean, I guess that's funny. I've never thought about that. Do inmates wash laundry in other prisons? They I mean, is that a do. thing? Yeah. Like they, they have washers and dryers. Oh. Oops, sorry. So... Wait, they're not, I mean, they're like loading a load of laundry and like right. folding it. And then that's hilarious. I don't know why I've never thought about that before, but that's a good skill to have, I guess. Right. Yeah. Okay. I wish our kids had it. Um, well, some of them are better than others. <laughs> <laughs> so the other cool thing was really, if you think about it, it was the most amazing views on the face of the planet. Well, at least in San Francisco. You had a view of downtown. You had a view of the Golden Gate Bridge. You had a view of the mountains on the other side. So you can see Golden Gate Bridge from there. I was wondering that. I just I think so. I think. I, I might mean, have made that up. Well, I, I mean. But in the movie I, <laughs> with Nicolas Cage, which I take as gospel, because he's a very um, trustworthy actor, it seems like. I mean, I was just assuming that that was a true scenario, but yeah. I Who watched knows? this really funny Nicolas Cage movie. Like a year ago. Definitely without you because you would not have been interested in it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say a single word the whole movie. Weird. Maybe yeah, like one word. But he gets locked in this essentially like a abandoned Chuck E. Cheese but like comes to life and kills people. But he's just like a total nah he ain't putting up with that and he just savagely murders all of these mechanical giant robotic animals. It's really funny. It sounds <laughs> Over the top. so terrible. You know what else? It, it wouldn't work if it wasn't Nicolas Cage. Right. I mean, I'm sure. You know what else Golden, the Golden Gate Bridge makes me think of? Not Nicolas Cage. Full House. Yes. Every time. 
Yeah. But. Yeah, but it, you never saw you know Alcatraz in the background. So no, that's true. You did not. I think little Michelle would have liked Alcatraz. Yeah, for sure. All right. So it had good views. So what was life like on the Rock if you weren't an inmate? So the the community was extremely extremely close, which makes sense, right? Which actually could have a lot of fun mm-hmm. factors to that, you know. It reminds so. me of our time in Boise. Yeah, a little complex. Yeah, we lived in this little apartment complex of like a triangle with a courtyard in the middle. Called the village, wasn't it? <sighs> I think so. You were the village people? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were. That's right. And every Tuesday, we'd meet in that center courtyard and everyone was bring your own meat and share like a side. Mm-hmm. It was the we'd funnest. Barbecue and... It was the best. Yeah. And so those people, I mean, that was, I don't know. Uh, 15 years ago mm-hmm. and we still I mean are good friends with all these people mm-hmm. so yeah, I mean it creates this close knit community Um, they talked about how almost every night they were either at someone's house for dinner or someone was over for their house for dinner Um, they said it really felt like a small little community most residents never locked their doors I mean they, if you ask them they would say like well, I mean there's more police here than anywhere else in San Francisco there's a lot less crime here than anywhere else in San Francisco. Well, I mean, of course, but at the same time, you were closest to serious criminals. So I don't think I would be that person. Like, I would be like, I'm especially locking my door because <laughs> these are people that especially try to escape. This is true. So that's good for them. But generally speaking, it was very safe. Of very course. Safe. Right. Um, we talked about school already a little bit. You know, they would vote in and out. Um, and just kind of everyone knew... Everybody, you know, you knew all the kids, all the kids knew all the parents. Um, so what was life like for the children growing up on Alcatraz? Besides, you know, having to go in for school and things like that, what do you do for entertainment? So I look back to my own childhood and all the crazy shenanigans and places that I would go explore and things I would do. And then I think, okay, if I was locked on an island with a prison on it, what would I try to do? Hmm. There'd be all sorts of fun things I think you would try to. Like break into the prison. <laughs> I mean, I think of our three boys and I'm like, ugh. Um, I mean, Everett would be really good at exploring all the different places. Yeah, would. Lincoln would be the one to try to break into the prison. Totally. Yeah. Um, I don't really know yet about our youngest, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> oh gosh. I just don't even know what, wh- because it would be r- redundant maybe in, you know, like, um, I mean, even it's funny cause even a neighborhood that you live in, I guess supposedly could get redundant, right? Like mm-hmm. you kind of get bored. And so you'd sort of get yourself into, I don't know, whatever in your neighborhood. But for some reason in my brain, living on Alcatraz would be more redundant than that. Um, so you'd have to really get creative. They got creative. So there was the boring, typical stuff like we talked about. A lot of concrete, a lot of bike riding, a lot of kite flying, um, a lot of baseball. This is the 30s, 40s, 50s. Baseball is... Like what football is now, you know, it's the big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I bet those kites didn't last very long. Uh, no, I'm sure it's very windy there. <laughs> yeah. Um, they did have a big game room with pool tables and a jukebox, so the older kids could, could kind of hang out yeah, there. That's fun. Um, the kids, there was a very strict rule, and I don't think you're gonna have a hard time figuring out why they had this rule. The kids were not to pl- allowed to play with any kind of toy guns. Mm. They're not allowed to play cops and robbers. Right. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You you don't want to be yelling about, you know, robbers running around. Right. Yeah. Totally not. When you're on a super max security prison. Right. (laughs) Um, So first, during the first nine years that the prison was open is what the kids would call the golden years. Mm. Because there was no fence around the prison. They could literally walk right up to the walls of the prison. Um, And so they would do all sorts of things. One one guy who grew up there uh, said the following. I mean, put yourself in my place. Only one third of the island was accessible to you. Everything is marked. Do not go here. 
danger. Don't go here. What does a young kid do? You do exactly what you're not supposed to do. Perfect. End quote. <laughs> Sounds exactly like. That's exactly what I would have been as a kid. Yeah. Exactly what every one of our boys would be like. What happens if I climb up here? What's in that window? What does this vent do? Can I get into this vent? Can oh, I climb into this drain? Like, I think as a mother, I would have been a nervous wreck, maybe. Yeah, I don't think you would have enjoyed it. No, I don't think I would have. Uh, our boys would be in climbing heaven, man. Like, trying to find every small little crevice they could. Well, and then I'm like, okay, are, are they tall enough that you're going to fall to your death if you end up climbing them? Like, do you need ropes and harnesses to like be bouldering like i just i don't know the yeah, terrain rocky, like outcrops along the yeah. shore that you're climbing on and you're just like oh this is perfect yeah the little crevices that they you know i don't even <laughs> so they did say they would literally try to break into the prison i'm sure the kids did um they did claim that they got to some areas that were like they got get into like the outer work areas but, but aren't there guards the constantly yeah, watching the, the outside of the prison yeah. too, like for escapees? So they're also going to be watching. I mean, what's the opposite of escapees? Kids trying to get in. I don't even know what that word it would be. Right. But well, the funny thing is, kind of ironic, is the guards who are literally guarding the prison and mm-hmm. would be, you know, if, if you climbed on the roof of Safeway or some grocery store, you know, cops are going to come and tell you you can't do that. But if you live on an Alcatraz, the cops are literally your dad and like your best friend's dad. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, so it's like, Jimmy, like knock it off, kid. Like, get out of here. Right. You know, it's not the the line of authority is a little more skewed and blurred. Right. That's true. And they probably turn their you know, a blind eye to some things that a normal, you know patrolman wouldn't for sure like, oh, it's the kids and they're actually okay right there like there's no prisoners until four o'clock whatever you know or right so they uh are these people would the time frame these people could still be alive oh they do yeah they actually have big like conventions well not big there aren't a ton of them but yeah they get together and i mean they would be older but yeah a lot of them and, could be alive depending mm-hmm. on the time frame but yeah, yeah. I mean, these yeah. are like my parents age right my parents oh. were born in 1950 yeah, I was thinking of the 35s, but I mean, uh, they were so like in their 90s if yeah. you were born in. Right. So a lot 35. of them could still be around. Yeah. But so, um, yes, yeah, so they would have to come up with games to entertain themselves. So I named this game myself. This was not a name that I found. I called it Operation Destroy the Sales. Okay. This is a fun little game where the teenage girls would head to the one side of the island where the guards couldn't see them. Perfect. And then, being cute girls, they would get the attention of sailboats in the bay. Hmm. And what do sailors do naturally? They sail over girl, to the... They, they come s- sailing mm-hmm. close. Now, ready to, you have to remember, this is a maximum security prison. So they're not supposed to be close. Close, right. But they would come close because there's cute teenage girls trying to get their attention. And as they would get close, the boys would get out their giant slingshots and try to shoot holes in the sails of the sailboats. Oh, my goodness. This is reminding me of when we would go camping in Shushwap. And we, well, we we started out with just water balloon launchers, like straight out into the lake. And we would see if we could how far they could go. And then it evolves to targets. And then it's like, oh, I'll go out it here. It definitely ends with boats. Oh, it does. You're <laughs> right. It ends with boats. Like moving targets. Yeah, totally. I mean. Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's see where that's going. Yeah. Well, I did that. We if did you, that. I will not say anything on this show that About... would incriminate myself of things that I did. Oh, are you going to get like picked up and put in jail? Like, no, it's probably statute of limitations now and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that bad. No. But we then turned, so there's clay on the bottom of Shushwap, just like a lot of places. We would then use clay balls and we would shoot. Fire them out boats. Yep. Huh? 
And then what about we would, jet skis? We would That's also yeah, sure. We would turn <laughs> it around and shoot it. So there was a train track behind the campground that mm-hmm. we used to go to. And we would shoot it at the train as the train drove by. I mean <laughs> You know our eleven year old loves listening to this show. Oh my gosh. So now yeah, that's right. He's got like car blanche to shoot yeah. things. Well you should have stopped me sooner. So I when he heard this have followed my example. Well <laughs> I can say that it was I am not the brains behind any of this. It's all teenage boys. Sure. I'm just along for the entertainment ride. But we actually You're just the cute girl that gives the boat's broke, attention. Totally. Broke the fence to the campground trying to shoot over the fence to the train. I mean, it was like that clay just, oh man. Anyway, yeah, this is what I'm picturing. Well, that's pretty much what it was. But the cool thing was the boats couldn't do anything because they can't come close and get mad at them because there's, there's prison guards all over the place that mm, will tell them to get away. Yeah. Right. And they're not even supposed to be close to begin with. Right. So if you have one hole in it, I mean, I don't know anything about a sailboat, but like we it one this hole. last week. In last week's no, uh, story that guy didn't have a that sail. You and I don't know anything about sailing. Well, no, but he, I mean, so I do have my small sailboat mare badge, <laughs> doesn't count. But, but I'm we like, did not is, go over if teenagers shoot clay in at your sailboat, that wasn't he, part of it, right? But I mean, is one hole sufficient? You can still get to where you're going, but like two or three, you're like, it's just useless, or is like one hole just absolutely devastating for your mission? I mean, you have yeah. a, a mare badge, so you should know. I feel like a hole. Would be uh, detrimental to when well, wind would still catch to a degree, but right. then it'd probably rip more. I just don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what mud so balls then do. They seriously just like let these kids just keep shooting them because they can't come closer. Well, I doubt they fell for it twice. I mean, but I'm just thinking, like, let's say all five of them are all of a sudden like, Grah, and they do it all at the same time, and there's three holes in your. I mean, how are you going to even get home? I don't know. That's terrible. Maybe a paddle. Do you bring a paddle on a Maybe you still. I mean, a lot of the sailboats still have motors on them. That's true. Okay. They're fine. My small sailboat did not. Okay. I, me and the wind. That was it. <laughs> me and the wind. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't always as fun as that. Is to that... live on the island. Oh, I see. Yes. Um, residents quickly learned um, that the sound of an alarm meant there's trouble. Mm. on the island and if you heard the alarm you had to stop whatever you're doing get inside your living room and sit on your couch and wait until an officer or someone came and said it was okay said it was okay happened about once a year usually there was an attempt at an escape that is an or escape. a riot something was going on in the prison um and then a guard would eventually come by and make sure that there was no one hiding in your house and that you weren't being held hostage. Oh, gosh. You know, that's that's a fun thing that you and I don't deal with on a normal basis. <laughs> or that anyone really deals with on yeah. a normal basis. But that's just the normal parts of living on a prison island. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you probably wouldn't love it as a mother. But you'd feel grateful that they're checking to make sure there's no, you know, convicts hiding in your closet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Or that you're not being held hostage. Yes, I would be some grateful. crazy escapee. Yes, this is true. So much gratitude I can feel right now. Yeah. So most of the time it was all good, except for the times when it wasn't. And then those times weren't as good. So on from May 2nd to May 4th, that's a three-day window Mm -hmm. for all you who love math. 1946 was the famous Battle of Alcatraz Mm. in which six inmates were able to break into the gun gallery and they tried to take over the prison in an attempted escape. Um, they managed to get a key to open the cells and they tried to work their way. The ultimate goal was to get down to the docks and from the docks, get a boat and escape. And they were actually held some of the prison guards hostage. Mm. And there was one prison guard who was really smart. He gave him like all the keys except for the one to the outer gate, like the old last, last one. Oh, that is very smart. So he gave him lots to do, but ultimately they couldn't get anywhere but it, was, it g- but it gave them time to kind of figure out a plan like right. okay i know these guys are going to get all the way there and then get stuck but it was a three-day legit like that would be terrifying major major issue um one of the kids who lived there they actually were living in san francisco at the time so his dad was on the island 
they were waiting to get housing on the island. Mm. His dad had volunteered to serve in World War II. So he'd been on Alcatraz, went and served in the war, was coming back. They didn't have room for him yet on the island, the family. So they went down to the dock during this time, and he recalls seeing there's smoke and fire coming from the island, and uh, the ferry's coming, and the warden's there, and a few um, of the prison guards are there, and one of them's got a bloody nose, and his mom asks, you know, the guy, like, about her husband. Like, where is he? Where is he? And, uh, you know, he said, oh, he's fine. But in reality, he wasn't fine at all. Um, he, he ended up being um, locked in a room with 18 of the inmates. Oh, that is terrible. Yeah. And he's in there and he how did he how did this i don't how did this happen so his story is at uh, least we know he lived he did live i'm trying to remember the details something along the lines of he's he's walking down he notices an inmate out of the cell this guy turns runs pulls the alarm you have to remember these other guys who had gotten out um, were already out. Probably they were out, and they had released a bunch of prisoners. Mm. They'd opened the cells, um, and so they he just ran into like a room, and there were a bunch of prisoners who also ran into the room, trying not to get shot by prison guards and mm. shot. You know, it's this chaos. Not all of them are trying to escape. Like some of them are just don't shoot me. I'm not trying to do anything. Mm-hmm. So he gets in this office. Locks in this office with these guys, with these 18 inmates, and he notices his uh, baton is missing. Like his, mm. you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's the baton. And so he tells him, I'm going to turn around. Like, I'm going to turn my back to you guys. And I don't think any of you guys want to do to deal with the outcome of this for those who are not behaving. Mm-hmm. So when I turn around, whoever has it is going to put it back on the desk. That's wow. Yeah, and uh, so he does. He turns around and it's sitting on the desk. Woo! So he's he waits out all three days, locked in this room, no food, no water, being tear gassed with these eighteen inmates. And, and he uh, didn't get the nope. Wow! No, all eighteen of them got transferred to much lower security prisons afterwards after that. for good behavior during yes. the thing. So of the six guys who actually started it, so I think there were, th- two, I don't remember, two or three officers were killed. Oh, sad. So of the six that kind of started it, three of them really quickly were like, this isn't going anywhere, and went back to their cells. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Just, But the other three... Uh, two of them actually were executed, and another because one, of it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and another one got another life sentence Which, on top of. I almost, honestly, I mean, I can't. I'm not actually in their shoes, but in my brain, I'm like, I think at this point, I'd rather be executed, you know, than get another life sentence. Yeah, that'd be lame. I could be wrong, but in my brain, I feel like that's where I would be. Yeah. So it wasn't always just. No, PG and happy. No, and, it wouldn't. You know, it would definitely be terrifying. Mm-hmm. So these people are literally sitting on their couch for three days, like they because the warden never came to like tell them, "Oh, you're fine." Or yeah, the guard. I assume at some point someone came and evacuated all of that half of the island. Okay, I would assume so, but I just yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then in so that was in what was that in the forties? Is that what I said? Yeah, forty six. So then in sixty two. Um, that was really so loud. There was a very famous escape attempt where these guys made dummy paper mache heads and put them in their beds and That's actually awesome. broke out. And then when the guards noticed them, so these, these are two of the guys that were never found. Mm. And so the, these kids who lived on the Island talked about for a long time, they were really nervous because they were afraid every time like they went in their bedroom, like <gasps> someone was going to be under their yeah, bed or in their because... closet or, because they never found these were. guys. 
Oh my goodness, I never thought about that. Yeah, so that's a little creepy. That Not a little, that is a lot creepy. It's a lot of creepy. Yeah. But they did never find him. They assumed they died, that they drowned. But And they said with time, everyone just kind of went back to normal. Because it's like, well, if you were escaping Alcatraz, you probably wouldn't want to hide on Alcatraz for an extended amount of time. Yeah, true. But for this first little bit, you know. I would be terrified. Yeah. They did have lots of interactions with the prisoners, though, um, for a lot of them. So there were like legit safety concerns with big things like that. But most of the time, they were just pretty regular guys. And the convicts who worked in the prison, uh, or the ones who were there for nonviolent offenses, did a lot of the jobs for the families that lived on the island. So, for example, we talked about they did their laundry. Uh, they also picked up their trash. They did the landscaping. Um, and so oftentimes they would just, if they needed a handyman, plumbing, electrical work, the convicts came and did that. Um, so they also had really just cheap rent and they also had all these fringe benefits that so they didn't have to do themselves. Mm-hmm. That's the true. Convicts did all of it. Um, so it was during those times, oftentimes the kids would find themselves face to face with the prisoners. I feel like I would be scared of that. But most of them, one resident said the following. So they were just the adults in gray clothing. I'd help them load our garbage and I'd help them collect our white clothes. I didn't care. They were adults and it was something to do. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, most of them didn't live up to their reputations of being these crazy, violent people. Uh, they said they did make one exception to that. And uh, there were a few guys in cell block D who were legitimately like violent, crazy criminals. There was one very famous um, inmate there who was named the Birdman of Alcatraz, Mm -hmm. Robert Stroud. Total side note here. This guy, we could do an episode on Robert Stroud. Crazy guy. Spent 54 years in jail, 42 years in solitary confinement. Whoa. Yeah. He uh, diagnosed psychopathic genius. Psychopath. He's a psychopath, Mm -hmm. but incredibly intelligent. Right. So he murdered a bartender, went to jail, uh, while in jail, stabbed a prison guard to death. That got him sentenced to death, but then later that was changed to life. So he's serving, he's in 1920, not in Alcatraz, in Leavenworth, another famous uh, federal prison. The cute German town? No. Oh, I no. like that town. No, no, not that town. Okay, I don't Here know. In Washington, there's a cute little <laughs> Bavarian town called Leavenworth. Uh, very different than the federal penitentiary. <laughs> okay. So he's in solitary confinement, and he discovers a nest with three injured sparrows. Birds. Injured? Injured. A nest in his cell? In his confinement? In the I don't... prison yard. But I mean, if you're in solitary confinement... But he still gets to go out and walk around for like 20 minutes by oh, himself. Oh, by for... himself. Yeah. Yeah. So he cares for them. And this is crazy. Within a few years, he's got a collection of about 300 canaries. He becomes Wait, literally see... like the bird man. Canaries. I thought for first you said injured sparrows. I did. Okay, so I don't understand how we went from sparrows to canaries. I feel like I... I don't know either. Oh, okay. Okay. But he's got all these birds that he... Like, so he goes outside and they, like, come flocking to him? Well, he must feed them and stuff, you know? I don't know. I my Brian, I see the homeless woman in Home Alone too. Mm. With all the feed. pigeons. Oh, I see. <laughs> and not feed the birds. Feed That's Mary Poppins. Birds. Okay, well, same thing. Okay. I'm very... Yeah. I don't know if I would put Home Alone 2 <laughs> and Mary Poppins as the same thing, but essentially, uh, they have women and birds. So I guess that's kind of the same thing. So that's why they call him the Birdman. Yeah. But, so he, okay. So he's, yeah, he's in these birds, right? Solitary confinement mm-hmm. for killing two people. He goes on to become like this crazy expert on birds while in prison. I mean, what else is he going to do? Yeah. He gets all this equipment because he saw it like to start working on birds. He writes a book, Diseases of Canaries, which was published in 1933. 
he's becomes like this major contributor to avian avian pathology and finds a cure for hemorrhagic septicemia in birds while in solitary confinement. <laughs> crazy. Nothing to do with our story today other than he was in Alcatraz. That's crazy. He actually, when he was in Alcatraz, um, saved a bunch of prisoners during this battle of Alcatraz. He saved a bunch of yeah, them? Yeah. Like he, once he was out of his prison cell, he like climbed over some wall and told a bunch of prisoners like get back in their cells and was able to convince the warden to stop firing on this one section because nobody was trying to escape. And so while he really liked to kill some people, he's a pretty good guy to other people. Yeah. Or maybe during the process of like healing the sparrows and like you, you maybe what he went through like a total moral change. I don't know, man. 42 years by yourself would, I mean, I talked to a lot of birds too. Yeah. It seems interesting, but he, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, side Total note. side note. Okay. <laughs> so, so maybe some of the kids on the island like so it, got to meet this no, crazy. So bird. the parents, the prison guard dads were very specific not to talk about the bird man. Okay. Or, and some other people who were in cell So did D. they have solitary confinement at? Yeah. Um, so is cell block D solitary confinement people? I don't know if they're all solitary oh. or not. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, so it was cool. I mean, sometimes the kids would get sick. Not that that's cool, but they would have to, they'd be sick enough. They'd have to go into the prison to go see the doctor in oh, the prison. Oh, like into the prison. Right. So they would get to meet, you know, yeah. the guard or the prisoners in there. Um, like I said, it, the most famous prisoner of all time is Al Capone. But is it only because he was like the mafia? Yeah. Mafia like, leader. The, I mean, and he, had he s- is escaped, Scarface. Right. But he had a, s- or wait, was he known for escaping other prisons? And that's no, why he went there? No, he was there because of his notoriety. Oh, that's why. And even when he went there, he was um, fairly, so he, he had a, well, he died of a heart attack, but he, he had syphilis. Mm. And by the time he was in Alcatraz, he already was suffering pretty, pretty badly bad. from syphilis, like mentally. Mm-hmm. And so he was pretty, everyone who met him said he was pretty chill and, yeah. and not much of anything. Right. But one kid did say he got to go in to the hospital and his dad t- took him in this back door and there was a guy sweeping the floor and his dad's like, hey, Al, this is my son, whatever. And. You know, he shook his hand and it's Al Capone sweeping, you know, the hospital floor or whatever. And yeah. The so kid has no idea who Al Capone is. But right. then in retrospect, you know, 30 years later, it's right. like, oh, wow, that's crazy. So when you're sweeping, are you chained? Like, I mean, you're not I don't just think so. Free. Oh. Well, wow. I mean, no, I don't think so. Maybe if some people were, you know, violent, obviously they wouldn't be doing these things. But Right. I guess I just wonder if you're already there and you've got like a life sentence i mean what do you have to lose to not be bad again but not all these guys had life sentences true but i'm just like so much of me is like i mean sure i mean if you have a life sentence and you have no possibility of parole yeah i mean do whatever you can to make your life as good in jail as good in jail as you can rack up seven more life sentences by doing what you have to do. I guess that makes sense, right? I mean, I don't know. That's don't what know I was wondering. Like, I mean, I just, I don't know. But if you got 12 years and you're definitely you're trying to get out. Yeah. Like, you're definitely going to gonna sweep that floor and be as good as you can. Yeah. I would still be terrified, to, especially if they weren't like. I mean, at least Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Maybe you chained can, enough that like, they can't really run and, you know, like, really run and get you or... I maybe don't, they are. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I don't maybe know. they have shackles of some sort that let them Prevent move around. Them. But yeah. they wanted to go do a dead sprint. You're... It yeah. you tricky. Right. That may make me feel so much safer. Like, I think I just... I don't know. Anyway. Maybe but I don't I'm, think so. At least not prior to that battle thing, because they were able to move around freely. Right. And get the guns and stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure that battle thing definitely made a lot of big changes for the other inmates. And that's what's sad is a few rotten apples ruin the whole bunch. No, most of the guys in prison are awesome. Yeah. It's just those couple that ruin it for everybody. Totally. All right. Yeah. Alca- actually, Alcatraz is very, the original warden was very progressive in the idea of criminal reform is like, we need to keep these guys as happy and busy as possible and they won't want to get in trouble. So and they that- have a huge library. Um, actually, one of the things, they played baseball, like the inmates played baseball and occasionally they'd hit a home run and the kids would get the ball, you know, cause it would land out in their cement pad. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I wonder if any of them were really that good. I don't know. But there was one gal who also talked about how her shoes were fixed by Al Capone. Oh. And he signed the bottom of them. Oh. I mean, why? forgive me if I don't know. Is he a shoe person? No, but probably just given that job. Like, Oh. And he signed the bottom of the shoes. She's like, I'm a cool dude. (laughs) But she said she wore them until they were like... Falling apart. And then threw them away. Yeah. And then as an adult, she's like, oh my goodness, it's probably worth like millions of dollars. Because they're signed by Al Capone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And not just that they were signed, like such a unique thing. Like, oh, for my sure. My shoes, when he was in prison, I lived there, you know. But so it's just an interesting place to grow up for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, Definitely not my cup. I didn't even know people lived there other than the inmates. No, I didn't at all. And so when I first came across the story, I was like, no way, that's crazy. That is crazy. And, uh, there was a lot of really funny um, just stories that the kids tell. Well, I mean, now they're adults, but of, of living there, interacting with again, right. the, the inmates. and It'd be very tight knit. There's no doubt about that, which is, is really a, a great feeling, you know, in many ways. And again, in other ways, I think I'd feel a little bit trapped. Yeah. yeah. One of the kids had a story about after school one day, they went to Chinatown and bought a ton of fireworks and then brought them back over. And then set them off in the middle of the night and went and hid in their beds. They got in big trouble, I bet. Well, they were able to uh, not get caught, it sounds like. Oh, they didn't really? Know who it was ever. But Oh, well, they already incriminated themselves just for telling the story. So, yeah. Luckily, all everyone else that would have been mad at them is long dead. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, interesting place. So, um, that's it for tonight. Yeah, go check it out if you want. I mean, there's lots of fun stories and, and things from those kids who, who grew up there. Uh, again, as always, if you're enjoying the podcast, um, like it, share it, leave a review, tell your friends. Um, it continues to grow like crazy. Um, this last week was by far our biggest episode as far as downloads and stuff. And I assume when we release this, it will continue. Um, we appreciate it. We do super appreciate it. Would really like to hear from people again, just anything. Um, you can email us at strangest species at gmail.com or on Facebook. There is a group strangest species. Um, and you can reach us either way there. Uh, again, if you have an idea for a show, a suggestion, um, or just any question comment, we'd love to hear from you. So we will be back next week with another, story that is strange that is strange i I hope hope. i hope so too i haven't picked it out yet (laughs) but i'm sure it will be i'm sure it will all right everyone you have a wonderful week and we will talk to you next week Bye. bye